First, let's create a donut shape. And then convert it to editable spline object. Now, we're going to discuss different types of sub-objects available in editable spline. First is the vertex, which we already discussed some of its features in the previous video. Vertex is basically a point in 3D space. Next is the segment. Segments are almost like edges in editable poly. But in spline, segments can either be linear lines or it can be bended curves. The last one is spline. Splines in here are an independent structure of edges inside one object. In this shape object, for example, we actually have two splines. This one and this one. Okay, now after we have a clear concept about the sub-objects in spline, we're going to discuss the spline modification techniques. The first spline modification technique we're going to discuss is the refine command. This refine command is used to add more vertices into our shape. To do this, simply click refine in here or in the quad menu in here and then click anywhere on the spline. New vertex will be created at the position we click. Next is the insert command. Basically, insert is much like refine, but it will add vertex once and then reposition it before adding new ones. The insert command will keep adding new vertices until we right click to finish it. Okay, to show you what I mean. First, click insert in here, and then click in here, and so on. Notice we can reposition the newly created vertex. Then click once to create another vertex next to it. You might notice that the next vertex is this way, not this way. This is because spline actually has flowing direction. So we know that this spline is flowing to this direction. Okay, now I'm going to create a random shape using line object. When we create a line object, the order of the vertex created will define the flow of the spline. So when we use insert, it will follow that direction. If you want to reverse the flow, we can go to spline sub object, select the spline, and then click this reverse button. Notice there is one special vertex that has yellow color. This yellow color is an indication that it is the first vertex and the starting point of the flow. After we reverse it, when we insert, notice, we have opposite direction from the previous. The next technique is erasing vertex. To erase vertex, simply choose the vertex or vertices, hit the delete button in the keyboard. One thing to keep in mind is that deleting vertex will not cut off the spline, but deleting segments will cut off the splines. So again, if you are in segment mode and hit delete, notice the spline become cut off. Our next technique is connect. Connect command in editable spline is a bit different than in editable poly. In splines, connect is used to bridge two vertices with segment. For example, we have two end vertices in here. Select the connect command and click and hold in this vertex, then drag it and release it on top of the other vertex. Now these two vertices are connected with a new segment. Next is the fillet command. Sometimes we need to make corners become round. This is where fillet command comes in handy. Click the fillet button in here and click drag up on this vertex. Now we can see this vertex become spliced and produce a rounded corner. Now if you want to make it more precise, you can just select the vertex or vertices and type in here the value of the rounded corner length. This value will determine the length from the original vertex to one of the spliced vertex as we can see in this slide. If we want to fillet like before but the result is flat and not creating rounded corner, we can use chamfer instead. Now again we have a command with the name of chamfer also in editable poly. But what we discuss in here is chamfer in editable spline. The concept is almost the same. To use chamfer, 
The process is identical to fillet. Click on chamfer button to enter chamfer mode and click and hold a vertex and then drag the mouse up. Or you can use the type in value at the right side of the button by selecting the vertex or vertices first. The last technique we're going to discuss is outline. Basically, outline is doubling the segments along a spline by adding additional segments inside or outside of it. To make it more clear, let's just see the example of it. First, you need to be in spline mode. It doesn't work in vertex or segment mode. Then, select outline in here and click hold, drag up or down on a spline. As fillet and chamfer commands, we can also select the spline first then type in the value in this input field. The value can be positive or negative depending on the direction you want to achieve, whether you want it to be inside or outside. The last option we can set in outline command is the center option in here. When this is on, the outline process will be uniform inside and outside based on the original spline. 